Hey guys, to Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be going over the self cooling, self powered Hydrant Vent Tamer. This design utilizes the self cooling steam turbine design in order to cool the turbine itself and the hydrogen gas. If you guys are not familiar with this design, we'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check out more about the self cooling steam turbine. This build also requires gold amalgam, and if you guys don't have access to gold amalgam, you guys will need steel. However, in the circumstance that you guys do have access to gold amalgam, this build will not require any steel at all. Additionally, you will need access to ceramic, plastic for the steam turbine, and of course refined metal for the metal tiles, metal temp shift plates, and the automation wire. This build also does not work out of the box and does require a little bit of balancing and priming, but we'll get into that later on in the video. Now the design is as shown, we have an 8x14 insulated tile box right here with two liquid locks, one going into a vacuum, that's where the steam turbine is with two layers of liquid, one at the bottom going into the hydrogen vent. The hydrogen vent is the source of the hot 500 degrees Celsius hydrogen gas. It spawns this every so often and you guys will have to analyze this to see a little bit more details. But because of the hot hydrogen, we had to put four tiles of insulated tiles right here to force the hot hydrogen that spawns to go to the very top and make contact with the metal tiles. This contact with the metal tiles is actually the main cooling mechanism as the metal tiles will then heat up the water or steam and once it reaches the temperature of 125 degrees Celsius or hotter, we'll kick on the steam turbine. The steam turbine is the majority of the cooling for the build as it has 95 degrees Celsius output water that it outputs. This is going to be fixed every time the turbine turns on and because of that, we use the output water to cool the turbine in and of itself. Now, once the water runs over the turbine, we're going to output it back into the steam room. The water at this point is going to be anywhere between 96 to 99 degrees Celsius, depending on the temperature of your turbine. However, that temperature range in all cases is going to be a lot lower than the overheat temperature of your gas pump. The gas pump made out of gold amalgam is at 125 degrees before it overheats. So we strategically placed a metal tile diagonal from the other metal tiles and outputted the liquid vent on this tile. This allows the water to cool down the solo tile right here faster since it's not touching the other metal tiles that's touching the hot hydrogen. This allows us to maintain the temperature of the gas pump more easily and the temperature range of the gas pump is going to be around 115 to 122 degrees Celsius. So now this allows us to get away with no steel but the only way this happens is by having a balance point of steam inside the steam room. Having steam mass to be too low will allow the individual tiles on the far left to become a vacuum. And a mass that's too high means that it takes too long to heat up above 125, which means that the gas pump will start taking damage. Since the gas is going to start creeping in, and if the turbine isn't running, there is no water to cool it. So the water droplets is very pivotal for the design, and that means you're going to aim for 17.5 kilograms per tile. If you guys are having issues with filling out the exact amount of water, we'll show you guys how to do so. Now the easiest way to get the exact amount of water inside your steam turbine room is going to be using the liquid meter valve. You could set the exact amount in our case, it's going to be 122.5 kilograms. And what we're going to want to do is try to make it so that we can pipe it in very simple you can see the pipeline we're just going to use the uh, steam turbine output pipeline to get the water inside and our pumps right there with water you guys could also use this method with a uh, liquid vent over here to fill up this layer of water as well if you want to get exact amounts and it's going to be up to you how you guys want to do that but by doing so you guys could connect that pipeline and then you could see that we're going to release exactly 122 kilograms and it's going to come out right there this is going to be the easiest way to do so, and by doing it this way, you could guarantee that you have the exact amount. And there you have it, 122.5 kilograms. Now the gas pump we mentioned earlier is connected to an automation to an Atmo sensor. In the entire build, this is all the automation we have. Ignore the vacuum door as you can see right there. And the Atmo sensor is very simple, right below the gas pump, sent to above 690. We actually need this so that we could have not only efficient packet sizes for pumping, 
we also need this to maintain a little bit of hydrogen gas in the room. That's due to the fact that the battery will be generating heat on itself and if we actually vacuum out the area in the downtime of the hydrogen vent, it causes issues as not only will the battery break, but spawning of 500 degrees Celsius hydrogen is going to cause the pump to break as this allows the heat to spread a lot faster. By maintaining a lower temperature gas in the bottom room, any new hydrogen that spawns is going to be drastically lowered immediately. And not only that, this prevents the heat from creeping into the gas as fast. This is going to be required and 690 turns out to be the sweet spot in my testing. Now, as you can see right here behind the hydrogen vent, there's also a pipeline. The gas pipeline is initially insulated, but afterwards we have it become a regular pipeline. The materials for this is anything outside of uh, an insulator like fossil or ceramic. But for the most part, I would recommend any type of gas pipeline that's a mineral, you know, sedimentary rock, mafic, sandstone, it's all roughly the same stats. And we do this to absorb a little bit more heat so that the steam never reaches above 135 degrees Celsius. This is due to the limits or the soft cap of the self-cooling steam turbine not able to actually function if the temperature of the steam gets too hot. So this is actually a required design. And as you can see, it's just a simple zigzag method. Now, as a result, though, the hydrogen gas comes out around anywhere between 160 to 210 degrees. This is actually going to mean that you're going to have to deal with some hot hydrogen, but this allows for the build to run indefinitely. Now, the steam turbine room is basically your generic self-cooling steam turbine design. I did a zigzag so that we could have two layers of cooling for the output water. And because of that, this requires you to have two liquid layers. In the case that you guys don't have crude oil, you guys could substitute this with another liquid like salt water, brine, polluted water. Ethanol doesn't actually work due to the uh, top in temperature. Petroleum does work as well. And in every case, you only need one full bottle of both liquids. That's going to be 200 kilograms is one full bottle. And the reason why we'll get into later when we talk about the priming process, you could see that when the one full bottle spills out, it's going to be 33 kilograms per tile. And this is just so that the radiant pipes have something to make contact with in order to space the heat. The uh, tiles right underneath the steam turbine is going to be ceramic for the six tiles. Not only that, the temp shift plates that happen to sit right behind the turbine, there's two of them on here and here, are also made out of refined metal, in our case, copper. The radiant piping doesn't really matter what it is. The uh, non-radiant pipings don't matter at all. This is just igneous. This is also sedimentary rock. The uh, copper does not have to be copper. If you guys only have lead, that's fine as well. And the material used for the radiant piping doesn't matter. Same with the temp shift plates. I do recommend that they are going to be the refined metal so that there is a baseline effectiveness. But using something like lead for the temp shift plates is perfectly fine. Same with the metal tiles right here. All you need is the metal tile properties for this setup. Now for the priming process, after you guys finish completing the build and design and it's fully built, liquids added in where it's necessary with the exact amounts, you're gonna have a situation like this, where your steam room is gonna be in a vacuum. Same thing with your hydrogen vent room. I would advise to try to vacuum these as well as you don't want any other gases getting in the way. The part of the priming process is going to be because of the fact that we don't have steam in the steam room and that's gonna be required. Not only that, we need to also temper the liquid layers of the steam turbine as well. So what we're going to want to do is allow the hydrogen vent to fully erupt one eruption period because of the low temperature of the metal tiles and the fact that we need to heat up the water so that it becomes steam, we have to use the thermal energy generated by the hydrogen vent. Now the issue is, is that in the full eruption period, we are not actually going to be able to heat up the water into a hot enough of a steam so that the turbine kicks on and because of that we generate no power so in order for us to actually move some of the hydrogen out so that new hydrogen could spawn we have to add in a hamster wheel the second thing we have to add in is going to be the gas pipeline right here this gas pipeline is so that we could use the hot hydrogen that we are pumping out to start heating up the liquid layers. Our target temperature is going to be 80 degrees Celsius. And the reason behind that is because once we have the turbine run on, the cold liquid around 30 degrees, as you can see right here, and if it's below 80, you're going to want to heat it up. 
the low temperature liquid is actually going to cause the output water to drop instead of increase meaning that the moment it drops off it's going to have the steam temperature around it plummet although that's going to be good for cooling purposes it's bad because on the long-term effects of it we're not going to generate enough power to keep the build running and because of that we're not going to want the hydrogen to stack up once the hydrogen stacks up above uh, 5,000 grams per tile, the hydrogen vent is no longer able to uh, release any more hot hydrogen and the build's kind of compromised. So we're going to wait for the full eruption period, after which we're going to want to attach the power wire. Then we're going to uh, wait for the next eruption period again. And that's just finished. Now the entire priming process is going to take anywhere between two to four, maybe even five full eruption periods and downtimes. But after you can see right here, the temperature of my water is creeping up slowly. Same with my metal tile, it's already above 100. And we can actually wait till the beginning of the next eruption period before we attach on the power. We're around 3.3 kilograms per tile of hydrogen, and we could go up to 5,000 before it becomes overpressured. So we're going to be running the hot hydrogen over this, and even though it's not radiant piping, even though the hydrogen's going to be very hot, it's going to be around 100, maybe 200 degrees, we're not that worried, as the stats and mass of the hydrogen is a lot lower than the liquids over here. So it's going to erupt soon, we're going to wait, and I would say that this process is also dependent on the temperature of the liquids that you guys input in as well. Mine's around 35 degrees. If yours is higher, hotter, it's going to be roughly the same, but uh, take it with a grain of salt. So, gonna be running out the uh, hydrogen gas. You could see that it's only around 90 degrees around the gas pump. Over here, you could see that my liquids are barely increasing, even though we have hot hydrogen coming in at 129, 130 degrees. It's barely going up in temperature. And now that we have the steam, it's going to start absorbing the temperature from the metal tiles and start kicking on the turbine. We're going to see really quickly what happens when you have the radiant piping into uh, liquids that are a lot lower in temperature. And we'll see the problem presented by that. You can see that we're constantly running on the wheel still as we're not generating power yet. And there we have it. It's already dropping, and the moment we come out, you can see that it's around 40 degrees Celsius. It's going to actually try to stay as water as well. It holds that much thermal energy in the opposite direction. So this becomes an issue as this immediately shuts off the turbine and we're not generating any more power. Now, we are in the fourth eruption period just wrapped up. As you can see, our temperature of the liquid layers is around 90 degrees, and that's pretty good. So because of that, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch this off to below. This is going to allow the gas pump to turn off and we're going to wait for all the gases to actually separate before we actually deconstruct the gas pipeline. Of course, when you guys do this, make sure to reconnect this and we'll show you guys what to do. I will disconnect that piece as that renders the entire segment from working and just connecting these two is all you need to do. After that's done, you guys can disconnect the rest of the gas pipelines. And after this, what we're going to want to wait for is the uh, gas pressure to drop below and we could turn this back on. So quick checklist. We got the temperature of the liquid layers above 85. In our case, is at 91, which is perfect. We have the steam temperature between the uh, 117, 122 range, and that's great. The hydrogen vent is now going to be erupting again, so we're going to have to wait to check. But I think at this point, we're actually going to be fine. As this is going to be running full force, we are already pumping out as much as we can. So we're actually going to remove the power line as well. But that's it. But there you have it, guys. The self-cooling, self-powered hydrogen vent tamer. And we don't consume any of the hydrogen in the process for power, and we don't use steel. If you guys have any questions about this design, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.